folks, I'm Niall from Quick Crop and welcome to our potting shed here today. We're going to talk about main crop potatoes. I have to say I'm a big fan of main crop potatoes and the main reason being is they're lovely flowery potatoes, they're really versatile, they're brilliant for chipping, roasting, boiling, not as fussy a potato as an early or a second early. You get them into the ground normally in mid-March to mid-April and take them out September, October. So they have a growing season of about 22 weeks or five months. But the brilliant thing about them is is how well they store. They will store right through the winter, right through till April or May of the following year when your new early potatoes are ready so that you can have potatoes 12 months of the year. Now today we've 12 different varieties here and I'm going to bring you through each of them very quickly. I'm going to start here with care pinks and what I'm going to do with each one is just cut the potato as I've done here already and just show you the inside. This is quite a, a white skinned potato, a really flowery potato actually very very popular in Scotland and Ireland and uh, lots of people love it I have to say I grow it every year myself I really love the color of it and the texture a great potato now moving on from then to King Edwards now you can see the King Edward here is uh, quite a yellow flesh potato and if I cut one open You'll see again, it's a little bit more yellow than the uh, Care Pinks was there. A really nice potato, uh, a late main crop, a classic potato for the Christmas uh, time and roasting probably the best roasting potato there is and that's why people use it at Christmas and it's quite a white creamy potato uh, but one of the great things about it is it is the slug resistance which can be an issue with potatoes. So that's your King Edward. Moving on then to one of my favorite uh, recent potatoes to become quite popular is the Isle of Jura potato. Now I've pre-cut this earlier on. Again, a little bit more yellow on the inside as you can see here. Uh, it crops really, really well, gives great crops and it has excellent disease resistance with a lovely creamy fl flesh. But the thing I particularly like about it is it's a fantastic flavorsome potato, which obviously is very, very important. Now we we'll move on from then to Satanta. Now I wouldn't go a year without growing Satanta. I absolutely love it and as you can see it's a red fleshy skin potato with a lovely yellow center to it so a really lovely yellow flesh potato but the great things about it is this is an award-winning potato for red skin it's the best roasting potato red skin there is and it gives huge taste and massive yields so it's absolutely fantastic, but it's also blight resistant. Now, remember I said that, it's blight resistant. So it's worth growing because blight can be an issue from year to year. Now, moving from Satanta, we move here to Sarpo Mira. Now, undoubtedly our biggest selling potato, Sarpo Mira, it wins on all fronts. So why does it win? Well, it wins on taste, it wins on texture, it also gives some of the biggest yields of any crop of potato. You can see it's a beautiful sort of white flesh potato inside. It can be grown in any soil. It's the most blight resistant potato that's available out there, which is really, really important. And it has great slug resistance, again, uh, really important. But it also is quite a weed suppressant because the foliage is so big on it, it covers the ground for weeds, so you get very little weeds. Um, and it's a lovely flowery taste of potato. So probably our biggest seller. And then moving on from that, I'm gonna to move to Mayan Gold. Now, I'll have to admit, this is a new potato to us. It certainly looks fantastic. I'm gonna grow it this year myself, but a, a lovely yellow flesh um, and a lovely yellow interior on it as well. I believe it gives great yields. Uh, it's a potato that it's an early main crop, uh, really nutty flavor and creamy and particularly good as a chipping potato I'm told. So particularly good as a chipping potato, remember that. Now moving on from then we move to Cara potatoes. I don't know a huge amount about this, but what I do know is that it's a very, very good potato for blight resistance. You can see here from the middle of it, it's a nice sort of yellowy uh, white flesh, gives great, great crops. It's fantastic for flavor again, and it has disease resistance, particularly for eelworm. So if you have a problem in your soil with eelworm, this is the potato for you. It's actually the allotment favorite because a lot of allotments do have eelworm because there's so much growing going on there. So it's an allotment favorite. So moving on from that, we've got Sarpo Exona. Now, 
What's the difference between Sarpo Exona and Sarpo Mira? Well, there's two major differences. One is it's a much creamier potato. You can see again from the inside, the flesh is very similar to the Sarpo Mira, um, but it doesn't give us high yields, gives a much more rounded potato, whereas Sarpo Mira can be quite big, knobbly potatoes. This is a more rounded potato and not quite as big a yield, but equally as successful from a blight resistance and all of that kind of point of view. Now, moving on from there, we come to Golden Wonder. I'm just gonna cut one of the Golden Wonders I hadn't prepared one earlier. Careful I don't cut myself. And again, you can see from this, this is a very, very popular potato. Most people will know it because this is the potato they use in the UK, mainly for making crisps, but also for chips as well. So Golden Wonder is a very popular potato to grow. It's getting increasingly difficult to find it in shops, and that's why a lot of people are growing it themselves now. But it's a really nice, flowery, white flesh potato. Very rich in flavor, as I said, a great cropper and has slug resistance. And slug Slug resistance in a wet year is really important. So any of the ones I've mentioned for slug resistance, I would take note because that's important. I'm gonna move on to the last three, which are a little bit unusual, but certainly worth a try, and particularly if you have kids. So pink fir apple is the first of those. And as you can see from it, they're most unusual looking. They're nice, yellow, fleshy potato. They're, they're a lot waxier than any of the others. Uh, as I said before, main crop tend to be quite flowery, but these are actually quite waxy and they can be used as a salad potato. But as you can see, they're quite knobbly and an unusual looking potato. They used to be huge about 120 years ago and they've made a big comeback in recent years with the home grower like yourself. I grow them every year and I'd certainly suggest it. Now, to move on from there, we're getting into the really quirky stuff now. We'll come on firstly to Purple Majesty. Now, it's definitely worth looking at the inside of these potatoes and the outside, right? They're, they're positively almost black when you look at them. And fantastic, like if you have kids and you make chips out of these, because they make great chips, if you make purple chips and the kids have people around, it'll just blow their mind. And it's really worth doing, even if it's just for that. Purple Majesty, they're a superfood. Anything that's purple, like you know, purple broccoli or these purple potatoes are particularly good for you from a superfood point of view. They're very easy to grow. They're excellent to cook. Nice thing is when, you, when you're cooking them, you can even show the kids the water because it turns the water purple and what other crop does that. So that's really good. Salad blue is my next one, which again is very similar. It's more of a kind of purpley blue, I have to, have to be honest, and it's quite similar to the, to the Purple Majesty. But you can see the rings on it. Uh, it's fantastic if you kind of chip it and you know, in really thin slices and put them in the pan. Really, really good. Uh, again, a blue potato, who would have thought? But potatoes can come in lots of different colors. We're just used to them in, in yellow and white flesh. Um, certainly, again, worth growing some, even if it's just for the fun of it. And we sell them in five tubers, so you don't have to grow a huge amount of them. Okay, so that's all of our main crop potatoes there. And just to finish up and reiterate, if you're not going to grow any potatoes, do grow a main crop. You'll get a lot more crop. They last a lot longer from a storage point of view. But I suppose the one thing to worry a little bit about is blight. So if you do pick one and you pick a blight resistant one, you'll make your life a bit easier. Now, like everything we always say here, all of these potatoes, right, the trays that they're in, everything that you see apart from myself is available on our websites, quickcrop.ie and quickcrop.co.uk. And if you want any of this just click here on this bag and it'll bring you straight through to the section for them thank you for watching as always happy gardening